Today's broadcast marks the shadow's 10th anniversary on the air. On this festive occasion, the Blue Coal Dealers of America are proud to present an unusually thrilling adventure of the shadow. Before the shadow starts today's adventure, I want to ask all you householders a timely question. When you consider buying a fuel, your first question is, what will it do for me? Well, here's what blue coal will do for you. It will keep your home comfortably heated morning, noon, and night. It will make things easier for you all the way around. And it will cut down your heating bills. You couldn't ask for more than that, could you? But blue coal gives you more. And without asking, too. For with every order, you enjoy the full benefit of your neighborhood blue coal dealer's extra customer service. So phone him tomorrow. <laughs> The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. As the Shadow, Cranston is gifted with a hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible Shadow belongs. Today's story, The Ghost of Caleb McKenzie. <laughs> gathered together, one big happy family. <laughs> happy family. I wish you could all see yourselves as I see you. Your vultures, uh, vultures, waiting for the poor old carcass to die. <laughs> of course, I don't include you in that description, Margot. Merely an old friend of the family, you understand that I didn't mean you. Oh, I understood, Uncle Caleb. But she's the only one that I exclude. Still bitter, aren't you, Dad? <laughs> I thought you'd be the first to speak for. You always have been. You take after me in that respect, I guess. I hope that's the only characteristic of yours that I have. <laughs> no, that's what I call putting the cards on the table. I've always admired you for that, son. You make no pretense of your hatred for me. This is more than I can say for the rest of you. Oh, come now, Caleb. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to say that, my dear Damon. No family gathering is ever complete without your injection of the phrase, Oh, come now, Caleb. I believe you first said it when I was six and you were three. And as I recall, you were even then seeking something from me. Choice it was in those days. Why do you insist that all of us hate you, Caleb? Because it's true, Damon. In each of you, the hatred has a different basis. My son Paul hates me because he feels that I've been a tyrant. That's why he left home. And you, Damon, your hatred is based on envy. You're jealous of the money I've made, the power I've gained. How do you pacify me, Kevin? Well, now, Marie, you, my dear wife, you're in a class by yourself. Yours is a long-suffering hatred, a, a patient one. I shouldn't have classified you that way when you left me ten years ago. Your loathing was stronger then. But being apart from me, seeing me only once a year, has tempered the emotion. I see. However, I can't say that time has lessened that feeling in your son. His name has no place in this conversation. Mother, please. Tell protecting that misshapen, sniveling son of ours. Don't talk that way about him. How else could he be described? Look at please. him. Please. To think that he bears my name, Caleb Jr. I've heard enough. At least when my first wife bore me a son, she bore me a man. Paul is a man. Shut up, you hear? Let me finish. I haven't described his hatred yet. I've saved that because his is the most bitter of all. It's a cunning hatred, a hate that you drilled into him from the day he was born. Dad, please, for Mother's sake. For Mother's sake. Always that been your cry, Caleb Jr. I, I think I'd better be leaving, Uncle Caleb. I have someone waiting in the village. No, 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 please, Margo. I, I asked you here tonight so that I might see one friendly face, even if it wasn't one of the family. No, no, you must stay. Well, I... I... Uh, sit down, please. Thank you. You see, Margo, this little ceremony only takes place once a year. I invite all my beloved kin here so that they may closely inspect my state of health. 
If I look wan or pale, perhaps it reassures them that the Mackenzie fortune will soon pass into their hands. Oh, come now, Caleb. Let's break this up, shall we, Dad? I'm sleepy and I'm bored. Sure, of course you are, Paul. Of course you are. But I have a little announcement, mate. An announcement about my will. You... You've made out a will, Caleb? Yes, yes, my eager brother. Yes, I have. Well, where is it? Who has it? Now, now, Damon, a little decency, if you please. I'm still alive, you know. I beg your pardon, Mr. McKenzie, but it's ten o'clock. No. No, thank you, William. Thank you. Uh, That means bedtime for all of you. Show them to their rooms, William. (laughs) Same old regimentation. I shan't see any of you in the morning, so perhaps I'd better say... Goodbye until next year. Good night, Uncle Caleb. Good night, Margot. Oh, I, I hope none of you forget about the will. <laughs> Hello? Is this Locust 5430, Ring 1? That's right. Shady in Ring 1. What can be done? I'd like to speak to Mr. Cranston, please. I believe he's staying at your inn. Oh, yes, he is. He is the uh, city fellow sitting right here in the lobby. I'll fetch him for you. Oh, for the joys of a bucolic soul. Hello? Hello, Lamont. Margot, it's after midnight. I thought you'd be in bed. No, I, I couldn't sleep. Lamont, would you mind terribly coming out here? I'd like to go back to the city tonight. Why, what's wrong? Well, I'll tell you when you get here. Well, I'll be right over. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sending out an SOS, Margot? Oh, Paul, you frightened me. I'm sorry. I thought everyone was in bed. Oh, I've been outside taking a walk. Cigarette? Yes, thanks. I'm sorry you had to be in on that little session tonight. My Uncle Damon sitting around whining, my dear stepmother glaring at us, and my beloved half-brother simpering in the corner. You know, as much as I dislike Dad, I can't blame him for despising him. Oh, Paul, it all seems so stupid, this yearly gathering of your clan. Mm-hmm. It always will be stupid until, until my father's dead. Paul, what's that? Sounds like someone coming down the hall. But who can it be? Looking for something, Junior? Oh. Oh, it's, it's you, Paul. Yes. I I was just going for, for a glass of water for Mother. You'll excuse me, please? Sure, sure. This guy gives me the creep. Always getting something from Mother. Oh, now, Paul, there's nothing wrong in that. I no, but... Hey, what is this? Pennsylvania Station? Everybody's up. Here comes William. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Miss Lane. Good evening, William. Why are you going with that sandwich, it's William? For your father, sir. He's in his study. Sandwich. Say, that gives me an idea. How about we raid the icebox, Margo? You're going, why not? <laughs> I haven't done that in this house since I was 16. And as I remember that... Uh, uh, what was that? Sounded like Williams. Come on, Margo, he's in Dad's study. Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul. What is it, Williams? What's wrong? It's, it's your father, sir. What about him? He, he's been stabbed in the chest. He's dead. Oh, Lamont, I'm so glad you're here. We've, we've just found Mr. McKenzie Sr. stabbed to death. Good heavens. Well, where's the body? Right down the hall here in his study. When did this happen, Margo? Williams, the partner just found him a few minutes ago. Oh, I see. Right in here, Lamont. Oh, come now. I still object to this whole rigmarole. Unfortunately, Uncle Damon, it's just one of those... Marie, things that... Paul. Oh, Margo. Listen, everyone. This is Lamont Cranston. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Lamont has helped the police to solve many crimes. And I'm sure that you won't object if, if he examines Uncle Caleb. Well, not at all. Oh, come now, Paul. Don't you think that's a bit presuming? No, I don't, Uncle Damon. My dad is over here, Mr. Cranston. I've covered him with his shawl. I see. Has the body been disturbed in any way? No, no. Everything is just as we found it. Well, I, um... I'll have a look if you don't mind. <gasps> Mother, oh. please... You mustn't look at him. No one has touched this knife? No. Good. Have you phoned the police? No, not yet. I'm afraid that'll be necessary. Oh, no. You'll excuse me while I phone Commissioner West. Oh, yes, of course. We don't want the police out here, Paul. No. Why do you allow a stranger to step in like this, Paul? Because that's our father sitting in that chair with a knife in his heart. Or had you forgotten? Why should you be so concerned about him all of a sudden? 
You hated him, too. We all know that. Why, you sniveling... Oh, Paul, Paul, please. I still think... Darling, stay out of this conversation. Well, as you wish, Mother. Yes, that's right, Junior. Run to Mother's apron string. It'll take the police about two hours to get here. Meanwhile, they've ordered that nothing be disturbed. I, I beg your pardon, sir. Yes? Lamont, this is William. Yes, William. Inasmuch as Mr. McKenzie is, is departed, I, I have a duty to perform. A duty? Well, what is it? I've been told many times by Mr. McKenzie that if, if anything were to happen to him, sir, anything like this, that I would find an envelope in his desk drawer that should be opened at once. Are you saying that my father anticipated that he would die this way? Well, yes, sir. Why shouldn't he have anticipated this? We all wanted to kill him. You know that. I do know that, Junior. And I also know that one of us gathered here is his murderer. Oh, come now, Paul. I don't think uh, that... Williams, uh, would you look for that envelope, please? Yes, sir. Perhaps it will contain a clue to his death. In that case, don't you think we should wait until the police arrive to look at it? Afraid of its content, Uncle Damon? Oh, come now, Paul. Of course not. Here is the envelope, sir. I'll take it, William. Thank you. There appears to be writing on the outside. I'll read it to you if you wish. Sure, go ahead. It says, Attention Vultures. What's that? What's that? <laughs> Good old dad. <laughs> he who will have will to find the will will look inside. Well, did you hear that, fellow vultures? Dad dealing in riddles, even in death. <laughs> Now, perhaps you'd like to hear the contents. Is it uh, about the will? I don't know. You'll have to figure that out yourself. Read it, please. It says, To find the one who's passed the test, search the place where my soul will rest. Well, that's enlightening. Doesn't mean a thing to me. Now, I'm afraid I must ask you all to go to your room. What? Now, those are orders from Commissioner Weston. Order to our room? That's right. What point is the police? All the right in the world, Damon. Come on, all of you. Let's obey instructions for one. Thank you, Paul. Okay, Margo. Coming, Junior? Yes. If Mother's with me. Of course, dear. I'll call you when the police arrive. Okay. Well, fellow suspects, shall we march in single file? <laughs> one of us will have to get used to that. Very clever, Paul. Oh, I'm so glad you've come here, Lamont. Uh, Margo, um, have you any idea who could have done this? No. It could have been any one of them. They all hated him. Let's see. Oh, um, do you know the whereabouts of this family burial, burial ground? Uh, oh, yes. Yes, that's right here on the estate. There's a large ball down near the brook. Well, then what are we waiting for? That sounds like the answer to the riddle. Where is the missing will? Shining that light in my eyes. Who are you? Speak up. Oh. Margo, come along. Our killer's loose again. Those shots seem to come from the vault. Yes, let's hurry. Look, Margo. Someone just ran out of the vault. See you running into the woods. Shall we go and see who it is? It's too late. We'd better look down on the mausoleum. Uh, I'd better go first, Margo. Give me that flashlight. Here you are. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. I'll just... He's dead, Margot. Oh, Lamont, how awful. Well, we know now, Margot, that this missing will is important enough for someone to murder for it. More from the shadow in just a minute. But first, time out for a picture of a man getting up in the morning. Uh, oh, boy, oh, boy, it's plenty cold this morning. I'll soon fix that. Oh, those slippers. Oh, there they are. Now I'll just set that blue coal heat regulator. Yes, more and more people are relying upon blue coal and a blue coal automatic heat regulator for quick, dependable heat these cold winter mornings. For blue coal sends up quick heat the moment drafts are open. And the heat regulator opens drafts automatically. A flick of the finger and the thermostat is set. 
Then, presto, a steady flow of heat ascends to those upstairs rooms before you can say blue coal. And that heat will remain constant all day long at whatever temperature you wish. Yes, blue coal in my furnace keeps my home comfortably heated 24 hours of the day. And the blue coal automatic heat regulator enables you to control that heat without running up and down cellar to regulate furnace dampers. Yes, blue coal and a blue coal automatic heat regulator make the modern combination for convenience and comfort. Phone your neighborhood dealer for blue coal and ask for a free demonstration of the blue coal automatic heat regulator. His name is listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the word blue coal. And now, back to the shadow. Lamont, do you think it's all right leaving Uncle Damon's body out there in the vault? Until Weston and his men arrive, yes. Why the concentrated skull? Oh, I'm simply trying to reconstruct this thing from the beginning. From what you've told me, Margot, I... There were three people prowling about downstairs earlier in the evening, any one of whom had access to Caleb Sr.'s study. Yes, that's right. Paul, Caleb Jr., and William. Well, Margot, that makes three suspects that we know of who could have killed Caleb Sr. Three? You mean all Williams is a suspect, too? Definitely. Oh, I never thought of that. Never thought of what, Margo? Of suspecting old Williams. Now that I do think of it, he could have killed Uncle Caleb when he entered the study. Right. Perhaps it's time for the Shadow to hear more from this kindly old gentleman. Oh. Who's talking to me? I am called the Shadow. The Shadow? The man no one can see? That's right, Williams. The man no one can see. I know of you. But why have you come here to see me? Seeking information, old man. Information that you must give me. What? What is it? First, I'd like to know why you aren't in bed at this hour. Why are you sitting in that chair fully clothed? Why, I... I couldn't sleep. I... Would that be caused by a guilty conscience, perhaps? No, no, it's just the shock. The shock of Mr. McKenzie's stabbing that keeps me up. Williams, did you feel toward him as the others did? Did you hate him? I had a great fondness and respect for Mr. McKenzie. You know, of course, that you will be suspected of his murder. I, I presume as much. But I shall have no trouble proving my innocence. That's more than I can say for some of the others. What do you know about the will that he left? The one that he spoke of in the note? Why should I know about that? You were close to Mr. McKenzie. He confided in you. No, no. I know he did. He must have told you about that will. You, you don't know what you're saying. Well, I'm only a servant. What I... do you know of the will? Was it in the burial vault? No, no, it wasn't in the... I, I, I mean, how should I know? I... You do know where it is. You also know the answer to the riddle. The place where his soul shall rest. Tell me, where is this place? Please, please, Tell I... me, Williams. If you would avert another murder, you must tell me. Very well. Very well, I'll tell you. The will is... Someone outside, someone's listening. Yes. Whoever it was has gotten away. Please, Shadow. I can't talk anymore. I can't reveal the hiding place. Williams, I'm going to give you time to reconsider. And remember that by telling what you know, you may save another's life. Think that over, Williams. Later, you shall receive another visit from the shadow. And then Margot, just when he was about to tell where the will was hidden, a noise outside the window frightened him. Someone was listening to our conversation. Who was it? I couldn't see. I'd guess that it was our murderer. Did you hear anyone moving about the house? No, I didn't. I met Paul, though, as I was coming in. Oh? What was he doing? Just going into his room. Oh, I see. Well, this is one time that I wish Weston could get to the scene of a crime a little faster. We have too many people to keep track of alone, Margot. Lamont, did you hear that? Yes, come on, quickly. Sounds seem to come from down the hall. What were those shots, Margot? We don't know yet, Paul. Old William's door is open. Perhaps we'd better look there first. Yes. I'll go down the hall and see if young Caleb and Marie are all right. Oh, Margot, wait. Why? What is it? There's no need of going there. I've found the victim. Who is it, Lamont? 
It's old Williams. Oh, no. He's been shot through the head. Lamont, who is the murderer? Have you any idea? Not yet. It can be any one of the three of them. Why should old Williams have been killed? Because he knew the whereabouts of the missing will. The person who was listening at the window when the shadow talked to Williams must have come back to learn his secret. And do you think that that person found it out? Do you think the old man talked? I have an idea that he did. If I could only solve that riddle, search the place where my soul will rest. That's the key to the mystery, Margot. Yes, I know, Lamar. Uh, do you want to come into the study with me while I inspect old Caleb's corpse again? Well, I'm not keen on it, but I'd rather not be alone either. I uh, just want to take another look at the placement of the knife in the old man's chest. I just had a fantastic notion about his stabbing the... Margot. What? The knife is gone. Gone? Yes. Our murderer has wasted no time in covering up. But how could the killer get in here? There are plenty of opportunities. Margot, this, uh, this chap Paul, what can you tell me about him? Well, Lamont, you don't suspect him. I suspect all three of them. Now, what can you tell me? Why, I've known Paul all my life. He couldn't have killed his father. I knew it. We played together as children right here on this estate. We used to have treasure hunts in the devil's playground. And, oh, Lamont, it's Margo, ridiculous. where did you say you played? The devil's playground. It's a large cave up above the brook. Margot, that's it. That solves the riddle. What are you talking about? Search the place where my soul will rest. That's what Caleb Senior meant, Margot. I'm sure of it. The devil's playground. Lamont, if you're right, that's where the will is hidden. Exactly. And before many more moments, the shadow has an appointment there with a murderer. I demand to know why you're here in the devil's playground, Paul. For the same reason that you're here, my dear stepmother. Then you followed me, didn't you? No, that wasn't necessary. I know this place very well. And you've come here seeking the will? Exactly. You'll never get it, do you understand? Oh, so you found it. Yes. I found the will, and I'm going to keep it. <laughs> what was that? You'll forgive my intrusion, I hope. Who spoke? Who was that? I am known as the Shadow. Where are you? I can't see you. I Don't can't... worry too much, Marie. No one has ever seen this fellow. What do you want here, Shadow? Well, my clever friend, I have come in quest of a murderer. And I believe my search has ended. What do you mean? One of you has come here because of the information that you learned from old Williams. Now... Which of you is that one? Not I. Nor I. Obviously, one of you is lying. Well, we'll switch to the next point of deduction. The search. The search for the murderer's gun. I'm sure that neither of you will object to this, so we'll just proceed. What makes you so positive, Shadow? But don't you see, Mrs. Mackenzie? This is your chance I to... warn you, don't come near me. Why not, Mrs. Mackenzie? Is it because you're afraid I'll find that gun? Answer my question, Mrs. Mackenzie. Very well. This is my answer. Marie, you... You have the gun. Yes. So keep away from me, both of you. You particularly, Mr. Shadow. I don't like your inquisitive spirit. You forget I have the advantage of invisibility. I think this gun will remove that so-called advantage. So, you wish to add me to your list of victims, Mrs. Mackenzie? I... I can't believe that she's the killer. That is the same gun that shot Damon and old Williams, isn't it, Mrs. Mackenzie? If you're that clever, you shouldn't have to ask, Shadow. Why did you do it, Marie? I'll answer that. Damon was unfortunate enough to be in her way. And old Williams was killed when he revealed the hiding place of the will. Isn't that true? Yes, that's true. You also feared that they might be named in the will as your husband's legatees, didn't you? Very interesting. Go on. But one of... What of Dad? And she murdered him, too. No, I don't believe so. She didn't murder Dad? No, but she thought that her son Caleb did. That's not true. My boy had nothing to do with my husband's murder, nor did I. I admit, I... I did kill Damon Williams, but I had nothing to do with the first murder. Well, then who did? You... You did, Paul. Well, that's a lie. That's a lie. You can't frame me for your crime. Just a moment. I don't think either of you is guilty of the murder of Caleb Sr. But who did do it, Shadow? We should learn presently. I've heard enough. 
I'm leaving here, and neither of you had better try to stop me. Put down that gun, Marie. I'm sorry, Paul, but you will be the first to go. Marie, don't. Don't you please. Give me that gun, Mr. McKenzie. No. No. Oh. Thank you, Shadow, for saving my life. Whatever it's worth. If you don't mind, I'll take this copy of the will, too. Give me that. G- give me that, too. Hold her, Paul. Now, let's have a look at this precious paper. Let go of me, Paul. Let go of me. <laughs> Listen. Listen to me, Mrs. McKenzie. I have something to read to you. I'm sure this irony will point out a lesson, even to you. As I've said, you thought that your son, Caleb, killed your husband. To protect him and your share in the fortune, you murdered two men. Now, attached to this will, I find a single slip of paper signed by Caleb McKenzie Sr. Listen to what it says. When you read this, I shall have committed suicide. Huh? In my will, you shall learn that I have left my entire fortune to my wife, Marie, and her son, Caleb Jr. Oh, no. No. Do you get the moral, Mrs. McKenzie? It's one that I can't repeat too often. Crime does not pay. And now, before we hear from the shadow again, here's John Barclay, America's home heating expert. Say, Mr. Barclay, may I ask you a question? Certainly, Mr. King. Well, I've often heard you mention the check damper on the furnace, and I've never quite understood what function it performs. Is it really necessary? Mr. King, the best way I can explain the function of the check damper is by comparing it to the accelerator on your car. You know how you press down on the accelerator when you want to go faster. Well, you mean that the check damper speeds up the burning of the coal? Precisely. When you want your furnace to produce more heat, you just close the check damper. And when you want the coal to burn slower, you open the check damper. Oh, I see, Mr. Barclay. Well, I should say the check damper is very important. Mr. King, the check damper is so important that anyone whose heating plant is not equipped with one should have it installed immediately. Well, thank you, Mr. Barclay. Now I know what it's all about. Glad to help you out, Mr. King. And if any of you listeners have a heating plant without a check damper, or if you have a heating problem, here's what you do. Simply call your neighborhood blue coal dealer. Tell him you'd like the advice of a John Barclay trained serviceman. This service is free. Thank you. Today's anniversary program is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine, which, like this program, is also celebrating its 10th birthday. And at this time, I'd like to thank all of you Shadow fans for the loyal support you've given us during the past ten years. We will continue to present these Shadow dramatizations, and in return, we hope we can count on numbering you among the listeners to our future broadcast. The characters, names, places, and plot of today's drama are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Next week, of same time, same station. The Blue Coal Dealers of America bring you one of the most amazing adventures the shadow has ever experienced. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. Be sure to listen next week. Your friendly Blue Coal Dealers presentation of The Shadow. And for greater heating comfort at less cost, remember...